All right, so we're just going to start off by first introducing your name and how you are affili affiliated with the Oakwood Cemetery. Well, my name is Chris Alton, and I've been, I have been work for the City of Hickory from 1981 to 2011. Wow. And all the years that I've been here, mostly I've been in the cemetery. And because of that, I've been had some uh, affiliation with death as well as the living, you know, because somebody got to be taking care of the, of the, the dearly departed, that's what I call them. But it goes a long way further than that when I was growing up. I became interested in the death and dying thing. I wanted to, when I was about fourth or fifth grade, I wanted to be an undertaker. Oh. And not because of the money, it was just because that you meet people from all not walk of life, different religion, different culture, and you get to learn from them. And, and it's very interesting how you get to learn. And sometimes you have to go to the services and then pay part in it as well and learn to get a more better, better what's going on. So that went a long run after you finish your course so, you know, with it. You can think about all the time you learned from it and how, how interesting it was and what the experience was. Mm -hmm. So anyway, all the years I've been there, I have really come across some things that were interesting in the cemetery, especially the older parts of the cemetery, to people who made Hickory what it was, the settlers and People, the next of kin, the family of, of the people who started Hickory, like the Schufford, Menzies, and that goes on and on, you know. So, uh, anyway, there have been some awful things that had happened in the cemetery that caught my attention. If you go out there in the cemetery, you'll notice it's a, of the uh, grave, the people who buried there. And you get an idea of what, we're, you want to know what really happened, so what you have to do, what I did was time to go up there and the library and find out things about it, or at one time, I think there was, uh, years ago, I think it was when Hickory Little Records would have a have their feature called Page, I think, for the path. Mm -hmm. And they would have things that happened in Hickory and, and all that, people who were involved and tragic that happened to people that brought them where they're at now, unfortunately. But uh, I think the one that really caught my attention are ones that had died in a way they didn't want to, mm -hmm. people who probably who were murdered or people who died in fires or heart wrecks and they just it just really it's really uh, interesting to find out why and how the mystery and all this and uh, and one example I want to give is this uh, there was a, a woman and her son who buried up there in the old reception who buried in a marsh like a mausoleum that was made out of, of bricks you know that was a dome shape. And there was one time, that thing when I first came here, it was covered up with ivy and leaves and all that. And the superintendent at the time, Conlon Lynn, told us to take it down because it was becoming warm and eyesore. So that one day in the wintertime, we just yanked that thing down and we became, uh, with some stone of a mock limb, and found out it contained two people who was interred in that grave. A woman and her son. Now the point was the woman had died trying to save her son. And her son died two days prior to her his mother did, which was on March 4 and May 4, 1913. Wow. Now, over the years after finding out about these things, I tried to search to find out where the person where her, where her husband is, and to find out one day I was in the cemetery trying to find out. Uh, I was looking at it, and someone who spoke to me there said, do you know those people? I said, no, but I'd like to know where the husband bird at. And, and she introduced me herself, and she was a cousin, a relative of it, that the husband had buried in a cemetery down in, uh, like Oakwood Cemetery in Staple. He got married again when he moved down there, and he, when he passed on, he was buried down there. So his wife was buried up here. But the, uh, the, the, what it is is the habitat, like there was a saying from the Bible that said, no greater love than the one to lay down their life for a friend. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what she was doing. Mm -hmm. And this is back in March of 1913. Wow. And this was on May 4, March 4 and May 4. Mm -hmm. The baby died, infant died on March, May 4, and the woman died in May, March 4. And the woman was named Ida Mall Hall, and the boy was named Gilbert Wrigley Hall. And they've been there 
Now it's been over a hundred years now since they've been deceased. And I, and I am so surprised that that mausoleum, like it is, a crib, had been there all these years and there's nothing happened really bad to it. Yeah, I'm, I'm really, I'm hoping it'll stay up longer or somebody mm -hmm. can they take the time to sign up like a, to uh, rebuild, I mean, you know, fix it up when we're going to decay or something. Mm -hmm. And there's others that are, or if you're going over the next section, there's another mausoleum that just got one single person in there who died in 1941. And it, it, it's more in good condition than the other one is. So I don't know how people did back in those days, how they preserved it, or, but whoever had the, uh, the ability to, to uh, make markers and ray markers, uh, whatever, they done a good job of making it Damn like it is. I mean, it's hard to go back to find these people you know, because I don't really know. But the one thing I want to say is that there's one plot in there, there's one section. Mm -hmm. It seems like to me that there's no, they're all related one way or the other. I'm married in the family and that is the Schiffer family. So that you think they were married into the family? The all, you say they were married into the family? Yeah, when the one was A.A. Schiffer. The one that started the Super Meals. Oh. And they thought it Hickory. I, I'm surprised they didn't even shoot, call it Superville instead of calling it Hickory. Because that <laughs> word you're down to Sutter's uh, Water, remember, was Super People would have their own furniture, they had their own funeral home, they had everything. They even started the church out here out in Meemaw, that Corinth Reformed Church. Mm -hmm. They're the charter members of that church. So that. You know, they kind of took charge of this, but you got other ones, the Menzies, and the Stroops, and all of them. them. And it's just a, it's a, it's just a real interesting history. If you ever get a, a copy of a book called From Heaven to Town about the story of, his, of Hickory, it's all there for you. And how much, it seems like you know a lot about um, the history of the cemetery. How much time did you spend, like? I did this on my own time, on really? the weekends, or when I wasn't working, and then, what made you want to do that? Do what? What made you want to research and find out about the history of Oakland? Because it was interesting. I, I, I thought I consider it like a hobby. Mm -hmm. Just like trying to find out the people in the music business. I mean, I mean more about the music too. Well, and religion and all was there. And that, to me, all this is nothing but a hobby to me. And it's, it just keeps me going. It, it really does. And if I don't do nothing, if I sit there and not do nothing, I'm going to waste away. Sure. So, since you know so much about like the city of Hickory and Oakwood Cemetery, like the history of it, how would you say, or how would you classify um, the importance of Oakwood Cemetery to the people of Hickory? I think it's more of a historical place. It should be considered a historical mon monumental thing. It's the most important cemetery of the whole town, other than the three, four cemeteries we got here. You know. Mm -hmm. But, I, you know, if you go over there to Fairview Cemetery and Bridgeview Cemetery, you, you know, that's the same way. If you're, if you're entering history, you're going to really want to know back. You want to be like an old Charles. You want to go back in time. You want to know what happened to these people, how they lived, and what they believe, and everything. Yeah, that, that, that's the part I'm getting after. So since this is a historic place, would you classify this as a place of being sacred? Do what? Since this is, since this is a historic place, would you classify this as a sacred place? You better believe it is. I mean, the most sacred, holy place you've ever known. All, all, all the cemeteries are more what I call sacred places. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to tell you, I would find it so hard to believe that why anybody would want to go to a cemetery of any sort. I mean, if it belong to a church or just a municipal cemetery like a city or to do damages like I heard people doing, that is bad karma. Anybody can do something to somebody, they ought to get what coming to them, no matter what it is. And I will tell you this, I would not want to be in a cemetery at night time either. Not, 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 <laughs> fearing, not, not, fearing, not fearing that the ghost and all mm -hmm. this other stuff. I'm talking about, why would you want to be in the cemetery at night time? That's the <laughs> thing about it. Why would you want to? Because people want to think, well, you're, you're not in your right mind and you're a little bit off your rock. <laughs> mm. I mean, really, you know, you hear about these stuff, policy movies and all this stuff where people do stuff like that. 
I don't think why they, I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know why people do that. But I sure want one. When you get started getting dark, you better get yourself out of the cemetery. <laughs> and I'm not saying that something's going to get you. You shouldn't do that. <laughs> and like I said, this cemetery is a sacred place. So why would you say that this place is sacred, in your opinion? Have oh. you had, like, people buried here? Um, do you know a lot of people here that is buried here? I don't believe in disturbing the dead. That, if that's what you're trying to get at. Mm -hmm. I mean, all people, the, the dirty part, whoever they are, whatever they are, whatever they did, they're considered important. They're on the other side, enjoying whatever has got coming to them, the reward that they live on the third. They got to them, they done their, they done their job on their, they considered the society, and they're going to reward. And that, I, mean, I want to let, let them have their rest, and, and that's, way you know, I feel that what it ought to be. So, um, since you, you don't you no longer work for Oakwood Cemetery, you don't work here anymore, right? Well I'm retired now, but I'm when I'm when I was here, I didn't only take care of Oakwood Cemetery, I took care of Fairview Cemetery, Southside Cemetery, and Ridge Cemetery. And also up here in town that one of what they call the Robinson Park. Mm -hmm. And that was a cemetery at one time. And there's a there's few people bur there's few some graves out there. If you go walk in there and find grave markers on the ground, you know, and you'll see that uh, uh -oh. Hey. Uh -oh. you you know, if you walk in the park, you know, it's about across from six AM. Uh huh. The, the Robinson Park is. There's some markers laying on the ground uh -huh. that people when they came like I said, when they came to Hickory that was one of the first city cemeteries there before they even started Oakwood and any of these other cemeteries. And, and there are some of them that were probably been buried there, were brought over here to this cemetery. And over at the uh, Morse uh, Ferry, now on 120th, off of 120th, and the house in Belmont, there's a cemetery all around in a, in a circle that were people that were buried there. They were brought over here and they were put in this cemetery as well. Not all of them, but some of them. But uh, anyway, you go to an, an old, going to an old cemetery, visiting an old cemetery, it's got to be more than most, most experienced thing you've got. To, you know, man, I'm not kidding. Because mm -hmm. you, well, like I said, you know, if you're not careful, you'll see things on the marker, mm -hmm. if you can ever read it, that people, what they did when they, before they died, what yeah. happened to them. That is true. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going to tell you, if you go to, uh, down to the old St. Paul Church, Going towards uh, Newton, the old church, mm -hmm. the old graveyard. That's another example right there, and that that what really caught me, that what got me into also an interesting on the afterlife instead of the what we are now. But there's there's a mystery on the other side that we don't know that some wouldn't know, and, and it is really interesting. So after you um, retiring yeah. um, for many years, what makes you return back to these cemeteries? I think it's called. You really want to know what it is? It's two words put together. Homesickness. Homesickness. <laughs> yeah, homesickness. Homesickness. Yeah. You miss, I mean, yeah, I've, I've, been, I've, been, I've been expecting a call any time. I expect a call. I said, Chris, we need you back. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, let me know when I'll come back. <laughs> Just what you want me to do? You want me to go to the cemetery? I don't mind working in the cemetery. How often do you come back? Huh? How often do you come back? Well, uh, when I come up back to the cemetery, it's usually on the weekends mm -hmm. or during the week, you know. I come out here and talk to God, and, and Sunday, y'all really come back on Sunday to pay a, a real special tribute to our friend as well as a supervisor. It made a lot of difference to me. I come to see his cemetery every week oh, really? when I can. Name is Larry Ray Spencer. And uh, so when he passed on, I couldn't get over it. Mm -hmm. And I told him myself, I said, well, I'll come see every, I'll come see every chance I get, and I did. Went up with the weather was nice, and and it was just, you know, I don't know. It's just like I said, you never know when you're gonna, what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to tell you right now, when when he last summer, he if he had lived on the second of August of last year, mm -hmm. he'd have been 70 years old. Well, I wanted to do something about that. What did I do? What did you do? I, I told it the to the Green Market, and I bought him one of these big old tall Budweiser. 
And I came, <laughs> yeah, I came over here that Friday, and I came to the cemetery and said, I said, here, Ray, here's your birthday present. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> <laughs> Tell and him how he did his funeral. Huh? Oh, funeral. yeah, I'm going to get to that right now. Now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up, Mr. Dollar. That funeral was a very interesting one right there, and I'm going to tell you what happened. I did not expect what was going to happen after the funeral, because it was a surprise to me. It really, I didn't say it, I said it freaked me out, but it really put me back in time. Well, after we got, well, the service was real good and everything, and but when we came back to Hickory, back to town from, from the uh, Hillstop Baptist Church, the preacher that preached there gave me good eulogy and sermon, and more eulogy than what it was sermon. But when we came back to Hickory, we came back to the funeral home, and I thought, well, why are we not going to, to the cemetery like we're supposed to? And I saw that horn drawn case, and I thought, oh my God, no. <laughs> so anyway, we got out of the vehicle, we took the casket out. He, him, David, and Dollar and I were both hoggers, and um, we took the casket out of the regular hearse, put it in that horse drawn carriage, and we walked behind that, that, that occasion until we got to the cemetery. Oh. And it, that was, I would say, that's the most, right most, that was the most thing right there that was, that was more emotional to you. But I will never forget as long as I live. I never, I, if I'd known it would be like that, I'd probably wore something from the past, like a, like a pair of rolls or something like that. But I did not know because anyway, life is more surprise. You don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> but I will never forget that service as long as I live. <laughs> and he died on a Friday the 23rd, and we buried him on a 25th or 26th, was on Monday. But uh, it was something, I was kind of upset, kind of disappointed when he passed on because I was wanting him to live long enough to see me get my plaque and all that stuff when I retired. Mm -hmm. But I guess the good Lord had his intention to call him home and mm -hmm. because he'd done his half on earth, so I had to accept it like it was and be able to go on, you know, and, and if he had not passed on, I would have been calling him up and saying, hey, what's going on, you know? But I couldn't. So anyway, I had to live with the reality of uh, him gone, but I still keep him in the heart and memory, you know? But at, but, uh, at first, a while after I'd gone from the city, my brother would come down here and come see me. We, he would stop at the store and get two bottles of beer, a Budweiser. He'd come to my house and get me, and we'd come to the cemetery. <laughs> we'd put him on the grave. <laughs> and it wasn't long until somebody would come around that evening or whatever and drunk him. <laughs> just like I saw that can about three more weeks later after I put the one on his birthday. <laughs> I said, really? Is this what happens after death when people come come back for some time? Do you think that somebody... And they're gone and they're, hmm, thank you you ever bought this, but that wasn't on the marker, it was on the grass. And, and when I saw that, I said, you don't know how to put trash in the proper place. So I had to be the one putting the garbage. So this is my last question. Okay. It seems like you're so passionate about the knowledge that you gained by, you know, working here at the cemetery. Mm -hmm. So how do you feel, like, what are, what are some of your emotions when you're he actually here? walking through the cemetery, coming to do odd jobs on your free time? Oh, I think, it, I think I feel the same way as I was when I left the city. I mean, it don't bother me. I'm, I mean, you know, I feel the same way as I did when I left the place. I'm still mm -hmm. one of them. It's just that the fact is, I mean, you you know, it's part of life. We face with death every day. We don't know what, we don't know what our time is like in the next day or so. I'd be just like the past week here um, when I was at the home with my apartment. When I woke up, found out that my neighbor had passed away. And mm -hmm. That kind of shook me up a little bit too. Of course, I didn't know him that good, but I was getting to know him pretty good. But um, the way he passed on was not a really good thing to see. And I'm glad I was not in the, I was in the house. I didn't want to see him being put in the, mm -hmm. 
Emil, but when I saw the Emil said, I had goodbye, Jerry. Mm -hmm. And that was right there. And that, it was like, it just like I said, he, he came in on the wire, he had to leave on my birthday. Mm -hmm. so and of course, the good Lord had ways to get around, you know. If it's your time, it's your time, mm -hmm. you know. People always have this vision of the, what you call the death angel, what they call the, the Grim Reaper when he had the mm -hmm. woman dressed up and the skeleton mm -hmm. and all that. That's the Grim, that's the death angel. Mm -hmm. Have time, it goes, that's it. And really, I mean, if I had my, if I could, you know, maybe sometimes if they would want me to come back, I'd be glad to come back. I would come back about three, four days a week or a few hours a week or you know, just whatever. If they need help, I'll come back and I'll do what I can. But that, you know, I'm always available. I told them when I left, I said, you have some problems with grade, finding grade, and call me up, you know my number. Just keep calling till you get me and I'll be here. <laughs> Because then, I mean, then after I'm gone, there won't be another one to like me. That's for <laughs> That's sure. True. <laughs> That's true. You know a lot. Oh, you yeah. Lot. I mean, I'm just like history here. I'm not going to say on ancient history. No, we can go to the public <laughs> library. We can just talk to you. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, the best thing anybody can do, if you want to find out stuff on people here, if you might not, go up here to the Carolina room, up there in the, uh, the, uh, the library. Uh -huh. Carolina room. Oh, that's a lot to find out about yeah. stuff like this. That's how I found out about my daddy brother who, who was killed in 1948. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what happened. I thought it was really interesting. Wow. But that's why I like to put up all my information when I can. I get it from hearsay. I learn off from people. I try to keep it in this head of mine, too. Because, <laughs> mm -hmm. like I said, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. That's true. And that's why I don't believe in computers. If God, if good Lord, wanted to have a computer, He would never gave you a brain. <laughs> <laughs> I never heard that one before. It's good. And that's what it is. But some people don't know how to use their head. <laughs> so I got, a, I got a good word for it. Use your head while you got it. Mm -hmm. But a computer's all right. If you don't, if you, you know, we we'll get into it real fast. But if the good Lord gave me a brain and he didn't spend to use it, you better use it. Cause when he goes faced out, oh well, that was it. Life run out. But anyway, it's been a nice talking to y'all. Thank Any you. More questions? I think that's it. Thank you. And now, if, if we had more time, I could take you to a tour in the cemetery. But I don't think nobody wants to walk. No. <laughs>